So I got most of the head bolts out. Um, I'm leaving two, one on each side, half in. So I got more bolts to take out, but then when I do, at least, uh, you know, I'm basically going to lift up on the head and make sure that it comes free and then it doesn't end up on the floor or on my foot for that matter. So that's what the intake, I mean, inside of the exhaust manifold looks like. So <laughs> it's uh, not particularly glorious, I will say. It's uh, trying to get some light in there. Let's see. Yeah. All right, here we go. So I uh, conjured a rudimentary lifting apparatus so I can lift up on this side of the head there really was nothing here to hold on to so um, these are existing bolt holes so I just uh, they were not used so I had to clean them out a little bit and then I just made this piece of metal and drilled the holes and put a hole in put a big hole in it for the hook so we'll give her a tug now we have to step back because I'm gonna try to lift the head off
So yeah, here's the cylinder. So uh, that's gonna be a gonna be a job getting that stuff out of there, you know. Oh wow! Oh, that might have just been knocked down from over there. I thought, how did that get in? Yeah, it's probably just got knocked down when the the cylinder head came off. Here's another one. This is diesel fuel, actually. I I stuck my finger in here and like, hey, that's that's not water. That's fuel. So this is water. Man, look at that's crazy. Crazy amounts of rust. All right, here we go. I got the head off. It's just sitting on a pallet right now. I got it upside down and. Um, the area of interest, I would say, is between the two exhaust valves. You can see, you know, here's the exhaust manifold. So here's the runner. You can see it right in here, right, for the exhaust. And likewise with the intake, there's the, there's the intake. And so it runs, you can feel it, you know, stick my finger in here. It runs over here. So those are the intake valves. Those are the exhaust valves. So if a head were to crack, this, it would be right there between the exhaust valves, because that's where the hot air flows. If you have a sticky valve or whatever, or you know something happens, or you just run a low on coolant or something, that would be the hottest spot. That would be the first one to crack, or possibly between an exhaust valve or and the injector. And then you can see, whoop, make sure you don't tip this thing over. You can see the circle around the hole where the injector goes. So that's an insert. And I don't even know exactly what the right way is to get it out, but I did see in the in the diagram that there's a seal around it. It actually gets bigger on the way up. Um, those are those circular things. They're about you know, two inches di diameter. Um, so I'll have to talk to the machine shop to see if they can they can get those out. And actually, I got an engine uh, manual also on order. Um, you can see this exhaust valve is sticking right, so it just was partially open, and it's been rusted in that position so you know if you were to run an engine that to where the exhaust valve doesn't close all the way that would cause this um to get really hot and uh, you know so far thank goodness i haven't seen any any sign of of cracking in in this area kind of cleaned this off a little bit and um haven't seen anything concerning on any of these cylinders so It's rusty, you know. I don't know if this, uh, if it this, I don't know how big that hole is supposed to be. Might have to clean out that uh, or replace those inserts. Um, so the newer style head. This is the old style head. The newer style head from serial number thirteen thousand and up or something has instead of these, uh, uh, what do you call it, package injectors or. Anyway, it has the, uh, I forgot what they're called, cartridge injectors. Um, it has the pencil injectors, which are, th uh, are thinner. They're like only about that thick. And um, those those allow for, you know, if the injector is smaller, then there's, there's more metal in the head. And then so that makes the head stronger. So those are less prone to uh, to sticking. You can see up here how thick that insert thing is. All right, so here's the heads. Here's the heads off my 3412. So you see that the, um, the injectors have these plugs. And on the old heads, I think they're, I don't know if 3412 or 3412A is any difference as far as I can tell. Um, they're basically the same, but uh, you see how these plugs are, are pretty big. They pretty much reach all the way to the valve. And so there's not a whole lot of material in the head in between the these plugs and the valves. And so that's a bit of a, a weak point. And, I talked to a couple of machine shops and uh, they said, you know, redoing these heads would probably be between $1,500 and $2,000 a piece. Um, that's if they don't have any cracks or any anything else, but just, you know, to redo all the all the valves and stems and all that stuff. And so um, then I, I found a set of, uh, of 3412B heads for the same price. They're also... I paid the fifteen hundred a piece, and and you see these. The big difference is that the uh, the plug here is uh, is much smaller, 
and so you see how much space there is in between the plug and, and the valves and uh, so that that's what makes this head stronger so I can have handle more boost and therefore more horsepower um, so um, the old heads I'm just gonna leave them for now and uh, uh, my plan is to put these on you know. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.